Pollution in a World with No Governments, lecture number four. Take a look at this turtle munching on a plastic bag. Is that natural? Take a look at this pipe with crap coming out of it. It's going into some water somewhere. Take a look at the bunch of these stumps in Indonesia. Was this Mother Nature at work? I don't think so. In each of these three pictures, we're seeing environmental degradation, what an economist would call an externality. Someone out of their own self-interest took an action that had social consequences that myself and many other environmentalists would regret. A common lesson that arises when thinking about why this occurred is that it's often on public property. Nobody owned that turtle. That water which that pipe was uh, sending water into, nobody owned it. That forest was likely to be public property. The classic free rider issue is that public property gets abused. This will anger hippies, but when it's private property, private property like your own backyard, your house, your wallet, tends to be treated better because there's accountability. You have the right incentives when it's your stuff to make sure that it's protected. Self-interested people make the right choices when they face the full costs of their actions. To bring this home, I want to talk about cigar smoking, and this example is less silly than you might think it is. So Sally likes to smoke cigars, and to be precise about the algebra, every time she smokes one, she gains $200 worth of pleasure. Cigars are not free. There's two costs to smoking a cigar. She has to pay $20 to purchase one, and she bears private health costs from smoking. For, she knows that cigars are bad for her health. And she recognizes that she bears a private cost of $5 for every cigar she smokes. Now, when you take a look at this arithmetic, she will smoke at least one cigar because the private benefits exceed the private costs. She gains $200 from smoking, but she has to pay $5 in health costs and $20 in market costs. So her consumer surplus is $175, which is positive social smoke. If Sally lived alone on an island with nobody near her, then there'd be no social costs from her smoking. But to make this a, an example that really grips you, suppose that 12 children live near her. They're not her children, they're just 12 kids. And each of them suffers $20 when she smokes a cigar. So her cigar smoking is a local public bad. We can immediately do the algebra and see that 20 times 12 is $240. So the social damage or externality from her smoking is $240. So would a benevolent planner, if there was some benevolent planner making all of our choices, would this benevolent planner allow Sally to smoke? The answer is no, because when you compare her private net benefits of $175 of pleasure from smoking, which is 200 minus 5 minus 20, but when you compare that against the $240 of damage her smoking causes, her smoking on net is negative for society and the benevolent planner would ban it. Suppose there's no government, but there is private property. Will there be an externality? Let's do the case where Sally has the right to smoke. Will she smoke? The answer is no, and I prove this through a simple algebra example. Suppose each of the 12 kids offers her $17 not to smoke. I want to show that this is a mutually beneficial trade between Sally and the 12 kids. Since each of the kids would suffer $20 each if she smokes, they certainly would be willing to pay $17 each. So in any trade, for it to be mutually beneficial, both must be willing to make the trade at that price. We've just shown that the kids are willing to make the trade. Will she accept this offer to where the kids are purchasing her smoking rights? The answer is yes, and let me show you. If she doesn't smoke, and if she sells the, the property rights to the kids, from each of the 12 kids, she collects $17. That's $184. We know from the example before that she gains $175 if she smokes. Since $184 is bigger than $175, Sally will accept the, this purchase by the 12 kids who each pay $17. Now let's do the other case, and this is the famous Coase theorem at work. Suppose the kids have the property rights to ban smoking. Will Sally purchase this right to smoke a cigar? The answer is no. The most she's willing to pay is $175 for the right to smoke. 
but there's 12 kids. And so if she paid each of them an equal share, the most she'd be willing to pay is $14.58. But we know that each kid suffers $20 when a cigar is smoked. So they would never accept an offer of $14.58. They're going to turn down the offer. And Sally's not willing to pay the $20 to each of the 12 children for, to earn the right to smoke. And so this was the key idea of the Nobel Prize winner Ronald Coase, who at 101 years old is still hard at work. The Coase theorem, in the absence of transaction costs, when property rights are well defined, efficient bargaining it takes place, and thus there's no need for government to internalize externalities. But these conditions do not always hold. The justification for government is often that property rights are not well defined and transaction costs stifle the ability of victims to work together. For example, with these 12 children, the kids can't, if, if the kids couldn't speak the same language or had trouble finding each other, those would be transaction costs which would limit their ability to negotiate with Sally. It's in these specific cases where there is a role for government, to, and this occurs all the time with urban pollution externalities. For example, in Los Angeles, there's millions of cars driving around, and no asthmatic kid can make them an offer or can identify which are the dirty cars, uh, even if he wanted to make an offer for them to drive less. And that's, so it's important. The Coase theorem offers a practical application of when we can rely on bargaining when there's clear property rights and when it's easy for the victim and the polluter to negotiate with each other. But there's many cases where those conditions fail and then we need to think through the benefits and costs of introducing government to mitigate externalities.